We're going to continue our problem of solving the, the potential flow in a square, which is an elliptic partial differential equation. Um, again, here's our, our problem that we that I introduced in the last video. At the last end of the last video, we came up with this discretization that's shown at the very bottom, where we have phi i minus 1j plus phi i plus 1j plus phi i j minus 1 plus phi i j plus 1 minus 4 phi i j is equal to 0. And now that we need to write in a big matrix to solve for our unknown potentials, which are the phi's. Okay, so before we can discretize our equation, or before we can write this in big matrix, we need to um, make our grid and identify what our, all of our unknowns are. So here I kind of re-sketched the previous problem, but I've put 16 red circles on there, and each of those 16 circles is one of the potentials that we're going to solve for. So for example, the first one in the bottom left corner is going to be phi 1, 1 which means that's the first phi in the x-direction and the first phi in the y-direction. The one next to that is the second one in the x-direction, the first in the y, and then we have the third in the x, the first in the y, the fourth in the x, the first in the y. And this is just my way of labeling all of these potentials. Um, the next one is the first in the x, the second in the y, second in the x, second in the y, third in the x, second in the y, uh, fourth in the x, second in the y. And we can keep doing this with all of the different uh, red circles here. So this is going to be first in the x, three, uh, two, three, 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 four, three, and so forth. Uh, one, four, two, four, three, four, and four, four. So there's all our different potentials that we're going to solve for. Now the way uh, the finite difference method works is we're going to write this as a big matrix M that's multiplied by all of the unknown phi's which is equal to some other matrix B. Um, and for each of the unknown phi's we have to write one equation in, in this matrix. So that's the form of it. Let's kind of sketch out what this might look like. So my M matrix is going to be a big matrix. Let's sketch it about that big. The phi matrix we're going to put here, and that's equal to the B matrix, which we're going to put over here. Okay, so first of all, I always like to start with the phi's. So let me start with the first phi. So the first one is phi 1, 1. And the way you organize your phi's isn't particularly important, but you just have to know how you organize them. The way I do it, I always write the x index first. So this one's going to be phi 2, 1, then phi 3, 1, phi 4, 1, phi uh, 1, 2. So now we're on the second y row, but back to the first x. And we have phi 2, 2, phi 3, 2, phi 4, 2. We'll go up to the next row, which is phi 1, 3, phi 2, 3, phi 3, 3. I'm running out of space, but this continues on for the other points in the matrix. But uh, there's the first, uh, almost the first three rows in the matrix. So we have that for the last row. Okay, so let's go think about what phi 1, 1 is. So phi 1, 1 is a boundary condition. It, it exists at the bottom right-hand corner of our domain down here. Um, and at all the boundary conditions, we just want to write that phi 1, 1 is equal to whatever it's equal to. So here, to do that, I'm going to put a 1 on the diagonal, zeros everywhere else. And what that reads is 1 times phi 1, 1 plus 0 times phi 2, 1 plus 0 times phi 3, 1 plus 0 times everything else in, in the phi array. So the only, the only non-zero term is phi 1, 1. And that we're going to set to our boundary condition. And the boundary condition in this case, I need to go back to my previous page to know what my boundary condition is. But in the bottom left corner here, phi is equal to um, minus x, which is equal to 0, or it's equal to y, which is also equal to 0, which is my left and my bottom boundary condition. So both of these and these, they match up and put a 0 here at the bottom corner. So that's what we're going to put. We're going to put a, a 0 in for that first one. Okay, so let's do that. 
So we're gonna put a zero over here, which just says that five one one is equal to zero. Okay, let's do five two one. This is also a boundary condition. So again, a one on the diagonal, zeros everywhere else. Which reads zero times five one one, one times five two one, zero times all the rest of the, the fives. And that, if you remember from the last slide, should be a, a minus x, which which x? Well, phi two one exists at the second x value. So that's gonna be minus x two. Okay, phi three one, it's gonna look very similar. So if we're gonna have, it's gonna have a one in the third entry in this matrix and zeros everywhere else, which reads that we have zero times phi one one, zero times phi two one, one times phi three one, 0 times 5, 4, 1, and 0 times everything else. So that's going to have a minus x3 um, because our boundary condition at the bottom is minus x and we're at the third x location. The uh, 5, 4, 1, the next one is very similar. It's going to have a 1. It's also a boundary condition. And here we have minus x4. Okay, 5, 1, 2. Uh, let's scroll up a little. Phi 1, 2 exists right here. It's also a boundary condition, so it's not going to be um, all that exciting because it's going to look just like the other ones. And zeros the rest of the way across. And over here, um, what was our boundary condition over there? I think it's Y. It's just going out over here. Yeah, the boundary condition on the left hand side where that exists is Y. So we're going to put a Let's see, we're going to put a y over here. So this is going to be y. And which y is it? Well, now we're the, at the second y position, so it's going to be y2. Okay. So we're filling in our matrix. We're making progress. But now we've come to an interior point. So phi 2, 2 is our first interior point, And that's going to use our discretization. So the discretization, um, I'm going to go back to the previous slide. And way down at the bottom, we wrote down our discretization. So maybe I can uh, copy this and bring it to the next page. So let's put that right here so we can look at it. And maybe scale it down a little bit. OK, so there's our discretization that we had up from the previous page. Oops. Okay, so that says that we need a minus four. So the last term in here says a minus four times the current one we're at. So for the for what we're currently working on, we have i is equal to two and j is equal to two. And that's because we're working on the entry in our matrix that's phi two two. So we're working on phi two two, i is two, j is two, and that means I have a minus four times uh, phi 2 2 which let's start with that it's always easy to start with the diagonal and the diagonal in this case is going to be a minus 4 so we have a minus 4 on our diagonal which says minus 4 times phi 2 2 okay and then all of the other terms in here are our neighbors so we have a neighbor to our left a neighbor to our right a neighbor below us and a neighbor above us and each one of those we need to put a 1 in front of Okay, so phi 1, 2, that's our neighbor to the left. That's the phi i minus 1 j term. And that gets a 1. So we put a 1 here to multiply phi 1, 2. Uh, the other, another neighbor is phi 3, 2. So we put a 1 on our off diagonal right next to the 4. It multiplies phi 3, 2. Uh, we also need to multiply the cell below us, which is this phi 2, 1. So that's j minus 1, which is the second entry in the matrix, which is going to be a 1 way over here. And the last one is this phi 2, 3, way down here, which if you count, it's uh, so the diagonal is the phi 2, 2. This is 1, 2, 3, 4 turned off the diagonal. So we're going to have a 1, 0, 0, 1. So on the fourth term off the diagonal, we're going to have a 1 over there on both sides. 
and we have zeros everywhere else in this matrix. So that is how we can write the, um, the discretized equation in that row. And that pattern um, is very similar where you have something on the diagonal, something on the off diagonal, and uh, these ones that are on the way off diagonal, they're at a distance of nx uh, columns away from the main diagonal. So this is the main diagonal, the minus four, and they're one, and they go one, two, three, four um, columns away from the main diagonal. Because in this case, we have a four by four matrix and nx is equal to four. And similarly, this one over here is also nx cells away from the main diagonal. And that pattern is very similar um, in all of these systems of equations where you find differences. The last thing we have to do is fill in the right-hand side. For this equation, if we look at our discretization, we just have a zero on the right-hand side. Um, that sometimes changes for just different equations, but in this case, we just put a zero over here. So that's how we just did that row. Okay, let's do uh, five, three, two, the next uh, row in this matrix. I'm gonna erase my red notation in here just so we have room. And 532 is going to be very, very similar to that last row. It's an interior cell, so we have to use our discretization. We're going to have a minus 4 times 532, which is a, min which is a minus 4 on the diagonal. So let's start with that. We're going to have 1s multiply our neighbors. So we're going to have a 1 to our, to our left, a 1 to our right. And we're going to have 1s that are on these off diagonals, these way off diagonals. So we're going to have a 0, 0, and a 1. We're going to have a 0, 0, a 1 over here and everybody over here is zero. So we have the exact same pattern as the previous row, just everything shifted by uh, one column to the right. Again, we have a zero over here. So that would be the phi three, two row. I'm kind of getting off a little bit, but let me uh, put it in a little green line just so you know that these are all phi three, two, 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 there's my, my rows in the matrix. The rest of them you can tell. Okay, and that and you continue this process. For example, 542, that is a, de, um, a boundary condition. So back to boundary conditions. 542 is boundary condition. You put a one on the diagonal. You have zeros everywhere else. And that's our boundary condition on the, on the uh, right side, which I believe is our minus one minus y. Uh, let me check that. That's our boundary condition right here, minus one minus y. And which y value is that? Well, we're at the second y value. Phi, phi four two is at the second y value up, so this should be y two down there at the bottom. Okay, and that's how you could fill in this matrix and keep doing that process over and over again to uh, build these matrices. In the next video, we'll code this up in MATLAB and I'll show you how we can solve for the potentials and actually compute the velocity field for this flow.